If the Tennessee Titans draft class hits, they could have two potential all-pro players. I'll explain on today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. You are Locked on Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked on Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland. Titans fans, today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. What if the Tennessee Titans draft class goes perfectly? What will happen in the long term? Well, I think the Titans have two all-pro players on their hands. They also have some very valuable starters and some potential pro bowlers on special teams. I'm going to talk about what it would look like if all of the Titans draft class hits their ceiling on today's show. Obviously, we're going to start with J.C. Latham. Before I get into it, though, I do want to thank you for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. Remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round. Always for free. Make sure you get subscribed. Stay subscribed. It's your team every day here on the Locked on Titans podcast. Shout out to my everydayers out there. Tune in Monday through Friday. Couldn't do it without you guys. Let me know who you are down below. Really do appreciate it. A treat for my everydayers. Tomorrow, we are going to look at the remaining needs on the roster and what veteran free agents could be available and could make sense. Friday show, the last show of the week, I'm going to do a mailbag and do want to remind you guys, I'm doing film breakdowns on every single draft prospect that the Titans brought in over on the Tic Tac Titans film channel. The link to that film channel is down below in the description. JC Latham is out. Tavondre Sweat is out. My Cedric Gray video will be coming out on Wednesday morning. Make sure that you guys check that out as well. But let's dive in here with JC Latham. I talked yesterday how about JC Latham is offensive tackle one right away. He is the best offensive tackle on the team, he's going to be the team's starting left tackle. He's going to be great in the run game. He's going to be good in pass protection. I wouldn't say that he's going to be Pro Bowl level player in year one. I think switching over to the left side, dealing with dropping the weight and getting used to NFL speed. The reality is, and look at Peter Skaronsky last year, and then look at Peter Skaronsky this year if you've seen the pictures. We'll talk about that uh, here in the coming weeks, but... Man, Pete looks huge. But the whole point is, it does take time for rookie offensive linemen to adjust. And especially when you consider that Latham is going to be playing at an entirely different weight. He's going to be switching over to the other side of the offensive line. So there are a lot of adjustment things. But I think he's going to be a a good player in year one. But what happens after that? You know, where does it go from there? To me, when he gets comfortable, he gets used to playing at the weight that he's going to play at at the pro level. He gets accustomed to the speed. You know, I would say it's like when you are tuning a guitar. You know, you're twisting the ends. I'm not, you know, a big guitar player or anything. So the technical stuff, you guys probably let me know down below what the technical terms for these things are. But, you know, you're twisting all the different things at the end. You're strumming the strings, making sure that it sounds exactly like you want it to sound, exactly like it's supposed to sound. That's what it's going to be like early on for J.C. Latham. But the reality here is, long term, he could be the best offensive tackle in the NFL. Like, and I go back to the Joe Alt comparison because I was a big fan of Joe Alt because he was a safer prospect, more technically sound and consistent. But Alt's upside is not as high as J.C. Latham's. It's just simply not as high because Latham has more raw power. He's got a better base and a better center of gravity as well while having longer arms and bigger hands and just more general power. So if Latham can catch up with his technique, if Latham can catch up with the speed of the NFL, if he plays at a better weight, Latham has the potential to be like a Trent Williams, Laramie Tunsil, that level of offensive tackle. So if everything goes right for the Tennessee Titans, not only do they have a lockdown left tackle in pass protection, but they also have a devastating run blocker who will absolutely move people out. I talked about B level, B plus level, stuff like that. We're talking about an A, A plus level offensive tackle that could be a perennial all pro every single year. And if that happens, well, Obviously, the Titans are absolutely cooking. So that is the potential long-term that J.C. Latham could hit. Will he hit that? 
None of us can know for sure, but it's definitely there, and that's a long-term option if things work out. Moving on to Tavondre Sweat. So, obviously, I'm taking all kinds of heat for my opinions on Sweat, my reaction to the draft pick, all of that. But on that same token, you have to acknowledge the realities, too, and I felt like I did a good job with that in my film down on Tavondre Sweat because there is a lot to like. There's a reason he got picked. 38th in the draft. It's not like the dude's an absolute bum or anything like that. You worry about off-field stuff. You worry about dedication to football. You worry about keeping his weight down, staying out of trouble off the field. Those are the things that can prevent Tavondre Sweat from hitting his ceiling. But if he does clean up, if he does mature, if a guy like Jeffrey Simmons and his college teammate Keandre Coburn and defensive line coach Tracy Rocker, if all these guys do kind of help him clean up his act and mature and get on the right page, well, you're looking at a guy who could be a three-down dominator. Like, he can absolutely roll you in the run game. He can get to the passer with quick hands and strong moves and combination moves. So, Devontae Sweat came in as a 260-pound edge rusher. I think I mentioned that yesterday. He's a guy who understands hand usage and how edge rushers, you know, work in that realm. But if he can combine that with his raw power and his strength, which he doesn't do a great job of now as I showcased on the film breakdown, he doesn't use his power well enough in the pass rush. Like, he's got to find a way to stay low off the snap, to fire out with explosiveness in his first step, to use his bull rush and his power, which he doesn't do enough on his college tape. But if he does that, then he's going to be a three-down force. Think about, like, a Vita Vea. Think about, like, a Dexter Lawrence. Those are going to... Think about an Albert Hainsworth. If you really want to go back in the time machine for the Tennessee Titans. This is a guy who is going to destroy double teams. They're not going to be able to move him. They're not going to be able to take him where they want to take him, which is going to free up linebackers, which is going to free up edge rushers, which is going to free up Jeffrey Simmons as well. He can be a guy who plays on nickel downs where he's shaded on the offense or on the center's shoulder one way or the other with Jeffrey Simmons as the three technique on the opposite side. He's going to be able to do that all three downs if he gets his conditioning right, plays at the correct weight. Now, I still think he's somebody who no matter what, go look at NFL history at guys as big as he is, even if he gets down to 350 and he stays there. Guys that big rarely can play 80, 90% of defensive snaps in a game. That cannot be the expectation. But I think he's a guy who can play two out of every three series. Every three series, he's going to be in the entire time for two of those. And I think that that is a fair expectation. And he can be an all-pro level defensive tackle if he does hit all of those measurables and he does do all those things, again, I would compare it to Vita Vea, Dexter Lawrence, Albert Hainsworth as well. These are guys who not only are so big and physical that they can win in the run game, but they also have athleticism and pass rush ability to where they can win on third downs as well. Can Sweat do that from day one? Some of you think that he can. I think it'll be a little bit of an adjustment period with these rookies, but if things do go well, that is the potential that he brings to the table. But again, for me, most of the concerns with Sweat are not on the field stuff. You can correct the on the field stuff. It's the off the field stuff that could prevent him from ever reaching his potential. But if he does, obviously the Titans are looking at two all pro level players. But with that being said, we are going to move forward, talk about the mid round picks for the Titans because Cedric Gray has the opinion to be a full blown starter in the green dot for the Titans long term. I'll explain even further before I do, though. Do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your ride or die, you can make sure that you get exactly what you're looking for. With eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Also want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the best place to buy tickets. I buy all my tickets on Game Time, whether it be NBA, MLB, NFL. Heck, they have concerts, comedy, 
theater, anything you want, you're going to find it. And the best part about Game Time is they have the best features. They have killer last-minute deals like their zone deals and their flash deals. They have all-in prices, so you actually know what you're paying for your tickets when you go to check out. They have a view from your seat, so you know what you're going to be looking at when you sit down. And they have the Game Time guarantee, which means if you find tickets in the same section in a row for less, Game Time's going to credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On NFL L O C K E D O N NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Titans fans, let's continue today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. We're looking at the long-term potential of the Tennessee Titans draft picks. I talked about the short-term impact that these players could have on the Titans roster on yesterday's show. If you missed the first part of our conversation, make sure that you go back and check that out. But of course, today is about the long-term potential for these players if they hit, if everything goes according to plan. For the Tennessee Titans, and again, these guys reached their potential. We talked about J.C. Latham. We talked about Tavondre Sweat and how they could both potentially be all pros. Now, I want to get into the mid-round picks for the Titans because I think they have the potential here to have three certified starters. And we got to start, of course, with Cedric Gray. But before I do, I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Titans your first listen each and every day. Remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round, always for free. Make sure you get subscribed, stay subscribed. It's your team every day. But looking at Cedric Gray, linebacker out of North Carolina. Yesterday, I talked about how he'll probably be part of the rotation early on. He could be in a training camp battle with Jack Gibbons for one of the linebacker spots. Definitely could be a primary coverage linebacker for the Titans with his ability to do that. He's going to be someone who could play in nickel or dime and obviously can help on special teams. But Long term, you got to think that Cedric Gray can be a full-time starter for the Tennessee Titans, and he may be a full-time starter for the Titans as early as this year. So long term, if he's able to do that, then he's definitely going to be a long-term linebacker for the next four years. I mean, Cedric Gray is a guy who is still a younger prospect, under 22 years old, so it's not like this is a guy who's maxed out and doesn't have any potential left and doesn't have any room to grow. He can still get better. And I think not only can he be a starting linebacker for the Titans, but he can be the field general for the Titans. We talked a lot yesterday about the green dot and what the green dot is. The green dot is literally a green dot on the back of your helmet. And that is the defensive player that gets the play call from the defensive coordinator and then tells it to the rest of the defense. And Gray is a very intelligent player, great football acumen, great communication skills as well. The Titans didn't even meet with Cedric Gray during the pre, uh, pre-draft pre process other than a little conversation that they had with him at the Senior Bowl. He wasn't even somebody that they had meetings with because they are so certain of his football character and of the things that they saw him do in college. So this is a guy that they didn't have to worry about. They didn't have to check any additional boxes. They didn't have to do any additional research on medical or character. They just know that Cedric Gray is a guy who takes football seriously. He's a smart player who's going to give it his all all the time. And when you have somebody like that who still has, you know, room to grow, who could be a starter from day one and be your green dot linebacker that sets everybody up, I mean, Honestly, the potential is limitless. Now, do I think that Cedric Gray has the ability to be an all-pro level linebacker? I do not. Now, I could be entirely wrong about that. We've seen some of the best linebackers in NFL history be later round or mid-round picks, but I don't think that has to be what Cedric Gray turns into. If he turns into an above-average starter, a good starter in the NFL who's the green dot, who's a three-down linebacker, not only because what he can do against the run, sideline to sideline with range, but also what he can do in the passing game, dropping back. On Wednesday morning at 8 a.m., my film breakdown on Cedric Gray is going to drop, and I'm very excited to show you guys what I saw from him on film. His Again, his range from sideline to sideline, his ability to use speed to get to the ball carrier. As a blitzer, I was very surprised by how well he did blitzing in college against the pass. I I think that was something that really stood out that I wasn't necessarily ready for. Every time, you know, I watch these guys on tape, 
There are things I expect based on the scouting reports, based on what you hear about players. But when you actually go and dive into the tape, you always learn something you didn't necessarily know that was there. And his his ability to be a blitzer, I think, is key. So long-term, three-down starter, above-average linebacker, good player who's the captain of the defense. I think that's all possible. And we're saying he's been a captain five times, twice in high school, and three times in college. So this is a guy who his teammates respect. But moving forward, got to talk about Jarvis Brownlee Jr. Um, And I do have something a little controversial to say here. So I talked about how Jarvis Brownlee Jr. is your CB4. He's your cornerback four. He can be a special teams dynamo. Um, He's depth in case injuries hit at the cornerback spot. He can be a matchup guy in certain dime packages for the Titans, depending on who they're playing that week. But one thing that we have to talk about here is, we talk about position versatility, okay? And we talk about positional value is really what I'm meaning to say. Roger McCreary is a very good slot cornerback, a nickelback. He's going to be a free agent in two years. He was a second-round pick, so he's going to be a free agent. If you're the Titans, do you want to pay a, a decent veteran contract to Roger McCreary, even though he's a good player. I love Roger, all right? I am constantly supporting Roger McCreary, educating people on how great of a player he was last year, even though some reason he has haters online. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but whatever. But saying that, do you want to give a big money contract to a nickel corner? It's not something that NFL teams typically do. It's just not. Okay, the value is on the outside. The value is in the pass rush. You don't pay safeties. You don't pay linebackers. You don't play nickelbacks. You don't play pay nose tackles. Like, generally speaking, those guys do not get the big contracts. And it would be an outlier if they did. So I will say this for Jarvis Brownlee Jr. I think there's a good chance that two years down the line, the Titans let Roger McCreary go in free agency and choose to keep Jarvis Brownlee Jr. as their starting nickel. And then they'll have two more years of rookie contract at the nickel, and eventually you draft another one. So kind of like running back, we're not giving out big deals. We're just going to keep drafting guys, and you can find guys in the fourth, fifth, sixth round. Six is maybe pushing it, but third, fourth, fifth. You could find guys in those rounds who can come in right away and be starting nickel backs for you. It doesn't require as much talent as the outside corners need to deal with the speed on the outside. So, I think long-term, we could see Jarvis Brownlee Jr. as the starting nickel in two years after McCreary's deal is up. I think that's a possibility. Finally, do want to mention Jaquan Jackson here. I talked about it yesterday. I mean, he's going to come in right away and be a starting punt returner and kick returner. Going to be a guy who rotates in on third downs. Going to be a gadget player within the offense. But if things go well, if he hits his peak, I think he could be the starting slot wide receiver for the Titans. He's never going to be somebody who provides value on the outside, in my opinion. He can be a starting slot receiver who is an all-pro, an all-pro returner at kick returner and punt returner, especially with these new kickoff return rules. His ability and space and his speed and agility, like we could be looking at a Pro Bowl, all-pro level special teams player in the return game. If he does hit his ceiling. And if he does hit his ceiling, that would probably also translate to being a full-time slot receiver in the offense. and somebody who is constantly able to create in space and beat people deep while also winning underneath. There's definitely potential there. But, you know, I guess the further we get down with the draft picks, the less likely it is that that happens. But either way, I mean, you see the potential with Jaquan Jackson. He could give you that. But I think focusing on the short term with Jaquan is probably the the better move. And same thing with the last two guys that we're going to talk about. But we got to get into those seventh round picks for the Tennessee Titans. And before I do, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. All right, game off. We got a pause here to talk about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that. But there's just so much good stuff in this game. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with your friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more that you win together, the more awesome the prizes are that you unlock. And there's so much to get. 
They have unique stickers that you can trade with your friends to complete big albums that give you big prizes. You can also get new playing pieces to travel the boards with. Hilarious emojis that you can use to taunt your friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure or Robot Pachinko Machine. There's always something new and new timed events that help you win big like massive multipliers for everything you win or um, like rent frenzies. They have everything. So there's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. Get off the bench and go download it now for free on the Google Play Store or the App Store. Game on. Titans fans, let's cap off today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. We talked about the long-term potential of all of the Titans' first five draft picks. But now I want to talk about these seventh-round picks for just a moment because there is potential there as well. Now, the ceiling isn't as high here. We have to accept that, at least for one of these guys. I think the ceiling is incredibly high for the first player that we're going to talk about here, James Williams out of Miami. But we just have to accept the realities that these are seventh-round picks. All right, go back and look at the Titans' recent seventh-round picks. I mean, you're talking like Cole McDonald. (laughs) You're talking about, you know, Colton Dow. Like, they're seventh-round picks for a reason. So I think expectations have to remain low. But, especially in the case of James Williams, you take a look at what they could be. James Williams was a five-star recruit in high school. One One of the best players in his county, in high school history, okay? So this is a guy who was considered a freak coming out of high school. Now, not everybody who's great in high school turns out to be great in college and great in the pros, and that's not necessarily how it works, okay? And we saw that with James Williams, who was a good player in college, but obviously a seventh-round pick. So, but James Williams is going to be transferring from safety to linebacker. He's going to be making the position switch. But I think that the versatility that he provides at six foot three, six foot four, with 4.6 speed, with great physicality, I think his ability to combine all of that and his skill set makes him like, you know, he's going to be playing at the linebacker position, but I think he's somebody who can just do more than that. You know, you don't need to pencil him in or pen him in at linebacker. I think he's a guy who can play a similar style. Again, we're talking about if he hits his ceiling as a player. I think he could be used like a guy like Kyle Hamilton, who is big enough to do linebacker things, but has the agility and the speed necessary to play as a slot guy, an overhang guy. And I want to point out, too, the Titans have struggled with quick RPO game in recent years. Teams will throw two wide receivers out on one side, one wide receiver on the other, and they'll run RPO. They're going to hand it off to the back if you're light in the box with six guys. And if you bring somebody close in to deal with the run, they're going to hit the quick pass out on the RPO out to the twin side. So having a guy like Williams, who is physical enough to play against that run, but also has the athleticism needed to get out to the RPO pass out quick on the outside, that is critical. So that's not linebacker. That's not safety. That's more of an overhang defender. Also, he's a guy who can blitz. So I think you could even use him as sort of an outside linebacker in a four-man front. If you wanted to basically play a 4-3 defense where you have your four-man front, and then you have two linebackers and, and let's say, Kenneth Murray and Cedric Gray. And then you can have James Williams as your third linebacker, your weak side linebacker, who's away from the strong side of the formation so that if teams do decide to try to target you on the back side, you have someone who can get out there and is physical enough to hold up where most cornerbacks aren't, but also fast enough to catch up. So I think it could be a perfect situation. I think he could be a Pro Bowl special teamer as well. With that size, 
that athleticism and that tenacity, I think he's a guy who tenaciousness, is that the better word to use? Tenacity? I don't even know. Anyways, I just think he's a guy who could be a Pro Bowl special teamer for you, but also be an incredibly valuable chess piece within your defense based on what you're getting from the offense across from you. So it may take him time to work into that role and to be comfortable, but I think that's the vision for him long term. The last guy we got to mention here is uh, Jalen Harrell out of Michigan. Um, we talk about low ceiling. I don't think that Harrell is ever going to be like a starter on defense. I don't think he's ever going to be one of your starting edge rushers by any means, but I think he could be a Pro Bowl special teamer. This is a guy who can play on coverage units, can play on kickoff, punt, do every single special teams aspect and do it well. And a guy who wants to do it and is proud to do those things, you know? So we're talking about a seventh round pick. I think it's more likely that Harrell is off the roster in a couple of years than it is that he turns into a, a special teams pro bowler. But the potential is there if he hits his ceiling. The potential is there because he has the want to, he has the athleticism to do it, he has the size to do it, and having a good size and speed combination on special teams is absolutely critical. I also think that while he may not be a starting edge rusher for you, he could improve his technique, he could add some weight and add some mass, and be a part of a pass rush rotation. He could be like your edge four. You know what I mean? Like basically... I don't want to say Rashad Weaver because he's been more of an edge three for the Titans, but I think he could take that role. And if the Titans got, if next year the Titans got a bona fide top edge rusher, and then Harold Landry is your edge two, and then Arden Key is your edge three, I think there's a good chance that Jalen Harrell could slide in and be that edge four for you and be valuable depth, rotate in, do some pass rush things, and to be a demon on special teams. And I think that with James Williams, with Jalen Harrell, if both of those guys hit their potential, I think they are pro bowlers on the special teams units. Maybe not on defense, but on the special teams units. And the Titans certainly need better special teams play this year as well. But with that being said, that is going to do it for my breakdown on the long-term potential of this draft class. Again, tomorrow, we're going to spin away from the draft class, look at the remaining needs on the Titans and veteran free agents who could fill those needs because the next wave of free agency is already starting to happen, and it's going to be going on throughout the next week, next weekend, all of that. So time to catch up on the free agents as well. Make sure you guys tune in for that. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titans. Locked on Titans.